Welcome to day 17 in the book of Isaiah, chapter 24. Now, I, I, I know that some of you are hanging out for the end of chapter 23 because I was like, this is all the judgment on the nations. And you're like, oh, I can't wait for that to finish. I'm sorry, I, I didn't kind of mention that the judgment continues in chapter 24 and now it's actually on the whole earth. So my apologies for the lack of warning on that front. But let's read chapter 24. It says this, look, the Lord is about to destroy the earth and make it a vast wasteland. He scatters, no, he devastates the surface of, surface of the earth and scatters the people. Priests and lay people, servants and masters, maids and mistresses, buyers and sellers, lenders and borrowers, bankers and debtors, none will be spared. The earth will be completely emptied and looted, the Lord has spoken. The earth mourns and dries up, even and the land wastes away and withers. Even the greatest people on earth waste away. The earth suffers for the sins of its people, for they have twisted God's instructions, violated his laws and broken his everlasting covenant. Now, for the nations that have been previously mentioned in chapter 13 to 23, they have broken the um, Noahic covenant, which post uh, the flood was that hey, you can't have this violence on the earth. You can't shed each other's blood, but they've broken that. And um, for the people of Israel, it's referring, you know, there's specific instructions in the Mosaic law about not shedding each other's blood. So they've broken this everlasting covenant that God kept with the whole, had with the whole earth, but specifically with his people. Therefore, a curse consumes the earth. And, and there's that Deuteronomic curse, which is, you know, choose life and you'll be blessed, choose death and you'll be cursed. They've chosen death and now there's a curse upon the earth. It's people must pay the price for their sin. They are destroyed by fire and only a few are left alive. The grapevines wither away and there is no new vine. All the merrymakers sigh and mourn and end, there's come an end. Uh, the cheerful sound of tambourines is stilled. The happy cries of celebration are heard no more. The melodious chords of the harp are silent. Gone are the joys of wine and song and alcoholic drink turns bitter in the mouth. The city writhes in chaos. Every home is locked to keep out intruders. Mobs gather in the streets, crying out for wine. Joy has turned to gloom. Gladness has been banished from the land. The city is left in ruins, its gates battered down. Throughout the earth, the story is the same. Only a remnant is left, like the stray olives left on the tree or the few grapes on the vine after the harvest. But all who are left shout, and sing for joy. Those in the West praise the Lord's majesty. In Eastern lands, give glory to the Lord. In the lands beyond the sea, praise the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. We hear songs of praise from the ends of the earth, songs that give glory to God. So judgment has fulfilled its purpose, which has people turning back to God. But my heart is heavy with grief. Weep for me, for I wither away. Deceit still prevails. So there's still this thing going on where there's good in the world, but there's also still bad in the world. And treachery is everywhere. Terror and traps and snares will be your lot, you people of the earth. Those who flee in terror will fall into a trap, and those who escape the trap will be caught in a snare. Destruction falls from the heaven, like rain from the heavens. The foundations of the earth shake, and this is kind of reminiscent of flood language where the, the heavens opened up and judgment poured down upon the people. The earth is broken up. It has utterly collapsed. So the chaotic Tahome has been released. Uh, it is violently shaken. The earth staggers like a drunk. It trembles like a tent in a storm. It falls and will not rise again for the guilt of its rebellion is very heavy. And that day the Lord will punish the gods in the heavens. And this kind of speaks of this council, um, a divine council, uh, which we don't really know what that means, but we'll find out one day. They'll be rounded up and put in prison and will finally be punished. So really it's talking about the demonic. Then the glory of the moon will wane and the brightness of the sun will fade. For the Lord of heaven's armies will rule on Mount Zion. He will rule in great glory in Jerusalem in the sight of all the leaders of his people. Okay, what does this mean? It, it feels apocalyptic. Is this um, eschatological? Is it talking about the end times? That's what it feels like. It feels like the devastation that we see in all the apocalyptic movies. I'm seeing Book of Eli. I'm, I'm seeing, you know, all these movies that spring to mind about um, just how awful the world looks in those end times and how devastating it is and the violence that comes upon the earth. 
Um, but in the midst of that, we see, and I don't know if that's what it is. I don't know if it's referring to a time that was coming on them or a time again later or a time in the future. It could be all three. Um, but but what we can take away from it, and, and I want to tell you a beautiful woman, Susie Dykes, she's been listening to the book of Isaiah and she's decided to write down every message of hope. And so we can't control the, these events. We can only control our hearts. So what about um, the, the verses of hope here? Uh, those who are left shout and sing for joy. So if this is coming, we want to be those who shout and sing for joy and we better start practicing now. Those in the West, pray the Lord's Majesty. I'm out at Narrabri in between Boggy and Narrabri right now. I should be praising the Lord's Majesty. In Eastern lands, when I'm back in Port Macquarie, give glory to the Lord uh, and, and etc. We hear songs of praise from the ends of the earth, songs that give glory to the righteous one. So we can take great hope that these things will happen um, because in the midst of it, we will be found praising the righteous one. How about you? What will you get out of today's passage?